I wasn't really sure that I wanted to do this video. This is the kind of video that could ruin someone's life. So if this ruins your life, I apologize. My name is Rob Skew, and I've been shooting black and white film for over 50 years and worked over 45 years as a professional photographer, shooting for decades for Major League Baseball and the NFL, and I've been published everywhere from Sports Illustrated to National Geographic. Maybe some of the techniques that I use will be useful to you as you learn film photography. So what exactly am I talking about? Well, let's just review for a second. We started off with 35 mil and I suggested maybe you get a Leica rangefinder. And I thought the best Leica rangefinder was the M6 TTL. Those are videos I did a few weeks ago. Then I thought, well, maybe you should get an SLR. So if you want to shoot with an SLR, I think the F3 is the one to go with. So SLR, maybe it's a Nikon rangefinder, maybe it's an M6 TTL. Then I said, well, forget all that. What you really want is two and a quarter. So I shoot with a Rolly Tele, but I suggested in my video that you shoot with a Hasselblad. Get a Hasselblad and get away from all those years of mistakes that I made. Now, whether you shoot with a 35 mil or with medium format, they're both similar in this sense. You're committed to photography, but you're only so committed, and you're only so committed to quality. So with 35 mil, you could buy a roll of film, drop that roll in, go take those pictures, drop the roll off at the lab, maybe they'll make prints for you, maybe you'll have them scanned. Uh, your commitment isn't really huge though. You just spot a roll of film and someone else is doing the processing. And uh, with medium format, it's somewhat the same. You can just buy a roll of medium format film and take it to the lab and drop it off. So I think in both cases that it's a compromise. And uh, I think that's good. And I think the happiest people are those that have settled because they've settled. Now, th now there's another rabbit hole though that is out there for those who are looking for even better quality and who really are asking themselves questions like, uh, what's the best quality that I can get? Or will I really understand a lot of genres of photography if I stay with 35 mil and medium format? And there's the rabbit hole of, maybe there's more than I can learn. If you shoot digital, and I shot digital, I worked for Sony, I managed their, one of their digital groups. So if you shoot digital, there's a maximum amount of stuff that you can learn about photography. There's going to be a whole area of photography that you're not really up to speed on. And let's call that the area of film. So you can shoot 35 mil, you can shoot 120. But if you're going down that rabbit hole saying, I wonder what the greatest quality is, you're going down a rabbit hole called medium format. Now, why would that ruin your life? Well, because it's unsettled. It's un compromised in a sense. If you're looking for the greatest quality in a photograph, you're probably going to have to go down that rabbit hole called large format. And it, it's, a, it's a never ending rabbit hole. You can just go on forever and ever. Let me explain and give you a bit of a background. So I started with large format in college. I, I studied commercial photography in the 80s and that was the era of film, there was no digital. And if you were a commercial photographer, you probably shot large format. Now, at the school I went to, two year program, uh, the first year was 100% four by five black and white. We shot no color and we didn't shoot anything but four by five. So I learned on a camera called the Arca Swiss and it was a basic monorail style camera. And I, and I owned one and um, other classmates who had more money than me, they, they might not have bought an Arca Swiss. They might have bought a Sinar, or a couple of people had Sinar Ps. These were super sophisticated, amazingly geared, wonderful cameras. Probably the most technical cameras that you could probably, you know, ever use. And people shot 4x5. And uh, zero people in this program had 
like a field camera. Think of like a Deardor for a wooden camera or a, an Ebony or a Shenho or these, these wooden ones. Everyone was using a monorail. That was the style of photography and commercial photography. And we shot on 4x5 for the whole first year. Now the second year you could shoot, uh, you could shoot some medium format. I actually shot a bit of 8x10 in the second year. The school had an 8x10 that you could sign out. We shot 35mm because we had a course called AV and you would do a slideshow. No, no self-respecting commercial photographer was shooting 35mm unless it was for a slideshow. Uh, everything else was done medium format or large format. And we were certainly into the large format camp. Now when I came out of college, uh, we shot commercial photography for a few years and we did shoot on large format. That's basically what we did. And then I kind of got back into the newspaper genre and became a newspaper photographer and that morphed into being a sports photographer. And those were certainly not on, on large format. But in, in those early years, I definitely shot uh, architecture on large format and products and things like that. So now, now I'm working as a sports photographer and years ago there was what we called in the industry the hockey strike. And really it was a lockout by the teams, lockout of the players, and it ended the season. Now, I'd had a great couple of years up until that point shooting a lot of hockey and a lot of sports. And I thought, well, I'll just wait for this uh, hockey strike to end. And uh, what am I going to do? So I went out and I bought, no, actually I borrowed, I borrowed a buddy's 8x10 Deerdorf. And I started to shoot 8x10 landscapes just for something to do till the strike was over and you know we were back on with our lives. I didn't realize it was never going to return to what it was. Anyways, so I borrowed a Deerdorf 8x10 and then I, you know, eventually I had to give it back and I thought, well, I'm going to buy an 8x10. So I bought a Wisner off of eBay, a Wisner 8x10. And I tried to order film and buy film and supplies and you know what, you just couldn't get them. And I thought, well, if I can't get them, then other people can't get them. So I opened up a mail order business called Big Camera Workshops and I sold uh, Kodak and Ilford film, 8x10, uh, even bigger, 11x14, uh, 12x20, all sorts of formats uh, of large format film and also the darkroom supplies. So the stuff was hard to get. It's easier to get now than it was when I was doing it and that's why I did it. it was to, Cause I needed it and I figured other people couldn't get it as well. So I had a, a Wis Wisner 8x10 and in my store I started to sell a Japanese brand called Ebony. And Ebony is kind of like Deerdorf if Deerdorf was higher quality. Now I have shot with a Deerdorf and people think that they're amazing and they are nice but there is a step above them and I think it's this ebony camera out of Japan. They were expensive. They were probably twice as expensive as a, a Deerdorf would be. Anyways, they were meticulous wood field cameras. Wonderful. The nicest camera that I ever used, the greatest camera experience was with uh, an ebony 8x10, an SV810 it was called. Anyways, so I was the, the retailer for Ebony for a few years and I shot with an 8x10 myself and I had an 8x10 larger and you know I was into this game of 8x10. So when I first moved into 8x10 I didn't have an 8x10 larger and I thought I would make contact prints. A contact print is when you take the negative and you sandwich it on the photographic paper in the darkroom and you just turn the lights on for whatever, let's say it's 10 seconds and there is no one larger, there's no machine involved. It's it's a print by contact. And the print that you can make is limited in size by the size of the negative. So if you have a 4x5 camera, you can only make a 4x5 contact print. If you have an 8x10, you can make an 8x10 contact print. And that's what I thought I would do. And after I did that for a couple of months, I realized I need an enlarger. There's more control. I, my stuff needs to be cropped, maybe. Uh, I, I need to have an enlarger. So I actually bought a used 8x10 enlarger. But there is that venue of contact prints that you could go down. Now, the other thing, while I was this ebony dealer, and I had other brands, Shenhao, and uh, there was some, wood, some wooden cameras, there were some metal cameras, a field, mostly field or technical cameras, they would be called. And I also, a guy ordered an ebony whole plate. So whole plate, I think that's six and a half by eight. So it's smaller than eight by 10, uh, bigger than five by seven. It's an old size. Ilford would custom cut the film for you, but the camera was the perfect size. A little bit smaller than 8x10, so the camera was the perfect size, and I, I bought one. But I also, also sold uh, Ebony 5x7, and I thought, oh, this is a nice camera too. 
Now, over the years, and I had this business, Big Camera Workshops, and I, I taught people how to shoot on large format. I went across the country doing workshops, and I owned about maybe four or five, maybe even six of the Zone 6 4x5 cameras, and I would take those, so you could take my workshop, and I had everything, the lenses, the camera, the film, you just showed up, and I would teach you how to do uh, large format photography. So it would be, you know, a weekend workshop. Anyways, as things changed, uh, Ebony closed. They didn't really go out of business as much as the owner, master, workman guy retired. And the, that was the end of the industry for them. So then there was some Chinese brands that I sold. Uh, I had the, the Ebony 8x10, but then I was really selling now Shen Hao products. And so I switched to a Shen Hao 4x10 panoramic camera, and I shot with that for a couple of years. And then and I sold that in the end, and I also sold my 8x10 larger, and I just had bought a Shenhao 5x7 camera, and I shot with that for a couple of years. And, and then when I retired, well, if you're a photographer and you retire, you retire from photography. So when I retired, I thought, well, I'm done. I'm, I'm, so I sold my large format stuff off. I had bought new lenses, uh, for, had them for years, Fuji C lenses, they're the best, I think, because they're so compact. And um, now that I've retired from photography, the last thing I wanted to do was photography, So, because I, I had done that. So then after being retired for a couple of years, I went back to shooting portraits. I do do uh, some video work unrelated to this, and then I have this YouTube experience that I'm playing around with. So anyways, I, I did have uh, the 8x10, I did have the 5x7, and then I retired. So where does this rabbit hole lead to? Well, here's a couple of things that I've observed from my years of being an idiot. Uh, don't buy a 4x5. Everyone starts with a 4x5. I taught people on 4x5. Don't, don't buy a 4x5. It's, it, shooting large format is a lot more hassle. It's a lot more commitment. and. Uh, if you're going to do all that commitment, the slight negative gain you get on a 4x5 over, say, a 6.7 or a 6.9 negative, the slight negative size gain is not worth the hassle gain. So I wouldn't suggest to people that they buy a 4x5 camera. I, I would probably suggest you buy a 5x7. An 8x10 is a little expensive to learn on. Uh, it's, easy, it's funny, it's easier to shoot an 8x10 than it is 4x5 because everything's bigger. But anyways, I don't expect people to buy an 8x10 camera. But, you know, it, it's not a bad way to go. Now, if you feel that you're going to make these contact prints, you're not going to buy an enlarger, you're going to make these contact prints, probably this is the highest quality you're ever going to obtain is with a contact print because there's no there's no machinery involved there's no extra optics involved and it's they're basically grainless photographs they're they're little jewels uh you know diamonds on the wall uh, especially like five by seven four by five is a little bit small like i said so if you're going down this endless rabbit hole now of quality and you start to see what other photographers have done with large format and you think wow i shoot still life if you shoot still life you might want to be shooting on eight by ten if you shoot landscape i mean hey it's a drag to haul this stuff into the bush but everybody's done it before you you're not the first one to think oh i'm going to climb this mountain with an eight by ten lots of people have done it you just have to look back in history and, and see the great images that people got so you know it is kind of endless and you're it can become very absorbing and it can kind of take over your life a little bit and maybe that's what a good hobby does or maybe it's obsessive i'm not sure you, you'll have to decide for you but i don't want to i don't want to downplay the this kind of endless not, not spiral because it's it's attainment of quality once you start to shoot on five by seven or four by five and eight by ten and you see the quality it could you could be hooked now not everybody's going to be hooked most people are going to shoot digital and not everyone's going to be hooked. A lot of people are going to shoot 35 mil. Probably most people shooting film are shooting 35 mil. And then some will get that medium format bug. And then a very few are going to get, you know, like bitten by a snake called large format. And for some, it's going to go, it's going to be everything. They're going to, they're going to just start shooting on 8x10 and seeing the results and going, 
wow, like, let me do more. And then that's why I ended up buying an 8x10 larger. I, I wanted, I got more and more into it. Now, if you don't buy an enlarger, it's a worse rabbit hole. So the, the best thing is to buy the 8x10 larger. If you don't buy it, what will happen is you will become unsatisfied with the print size of the 8x10s. An 8x10 contact print will be meticulous. Look at Est Edward Weston's stuff. Done a hundred years ago, it's it's beautiful to look at. Uh, if you go to the to the Eastman Museum in Rochester, I, I went there actually for the Edward Weston show years ago, and a, a group of us went. We carpooled. It was a great day. We get there. We've driven for hours. Now we're in Rochester. We get there, and the woman goes, "Oh, there's been like a leak in the roof." Uh, and the, the gallery is, that wing is closed. You can't go and see the Edward Weston show because there's a leak in the roof and we're like frantic to try to straighten it out. And I'm going, well, we just drove like three hours across the border to get here. So they said, well, you go and look at the other part of the shows and come back at the end and we'll, figure, we'll have figured something out. So anyways, we, we go, we see the other shows, we come back and, and she goes, well, you can't go in the, in the gallery because it's wet. So why don't you meet with a guy in the back and he'll show you the, some Edward Weston's. And they showed us platinum prints, Edward Weston's that were not on display. They were not part of the display. They're just part of the collection. They showed us these Edward Weston platinum 8x10 prints. Uh, they were absolutely beautiful. Stunning, stunning prints. Anyways, so you become satisfied with 8x10, but then you want more. And this is where it's really hairy. It'd have been better to buy it on larger. But you, you buy like an 11 by 14 camera, like bigger than 8x10, or maybe you buy a, a 12 by 20, or a 16 by 20, 16 by 20 inch camera, that's the negatives. Or 2024 negative, that's how big the negative is, so you can make this giant contact print and have the absolute quality. Now, this is an expensive thing. When I had the business selling large format supplies, the 2024 Ilford HP5 was $37 Canadian, $37 a sheet. I don't know what it would be now. It would be definitely be more than that. So you're gonna have to have a, a few skills behind you before you're gonna start shooting $40 sheets of film. But I'll tell you, the work is, if you can get it right, if you understand how the cameras work, the, the prints are magnificent. So the rabbit hole that I'm kind of, the obsession that I'm warning you of is when you start to look for ultimate quality and you see medium format and you get into that a little bit and then you say, what's the next step? And then you get into four by five, five by seven and you think, wow, these are amazing. Look at the prints, the print quality is spectacular. Then you start shooting eight by 10, which probably is where it should stop. But if you're making contact prints, then you've got to go 11 by 14 or maybe 16 by 20 negative. It's just endless. It's endless. It's probably expensive. It, you might, you're going to have to, you know, have a lot of money or sacrifice a few other things if you're going to start shooting like super large format. But the quality is amazing. Now, do I recommend that you do that? Is this obsession with quality and photography, it's a hobby, is, is this obsession healthy? Maybe it is, like I, I can't say for you uh, and your situation and your family and your life what's healthy and what isn't. Uh, maybe the fact that it gets you out into the woods and into the trees and into the, into the mountains with a camera, maybe that's healthy, I don't know. But you're just, you're gonna have to go down this rabbit hole and it's gotta stop somewhere. So, try the large format, get bit by the bug, and then remember that you might have to back out of this. It might, it might be too obsessive for you, and I really believe for some people, it, they go down this rabbit hole and it's, they're gone forever, or until they can't carry the big cameras anymore. For me, I've got rid of all my large format gear when I retired, and I have settled. I have settled on medium format. I don't really feel that uh, I need to shoot larger than that. And my enlarge, I've sold my 8x10 larger, so now I only have a 4x5 enlarger. I could shoot 4x5, but as I said, it's more hassle than the, the, the gain. 
So I think for myself, I've settled on medium format is a good warm spot to be. But I'll tell you, when you start going and looking at 8x10 negatives and 8x10 prints, an 11 by 14 contact print. I remember there used to be 16 by 20 Polaroids. When you start to look at this stuff, you just like, wow, you can really get obsessed with this. And you can still buy 20 by 24 cameras. Keith sells one and uh, you know, he'd be, he'd have to custom make it for you, but he would. And Ebony custom made a few and you see them on eBay used. Uh, they're always immaculate. And you know, you might go out with a, big camera like that and shoot two frames. I, I understand that, you have to understand that, that you're not going out there and shooting 40, 50 shots in a day because it's, it's, a, it's not physically possible. But anyways, there's a rabbit hole to consider. Just be careful, once you get bit, you're bit, I'm just saying.